Hi developers, it's Real Tough Candy back online with you guys today for a review of App Academy Open. This video topic was suggested to me quite some months ago by my guy S. Morales. He works over at Google in a technical position, but it's not web development and he's trying to expand his skill set. He wanted to know what I thought of this. And I have to be honest, a big part of the reason why it took me so long to produce this to produce this video is because I've been dragging my heels knowing that this is a free curriculum for anyone to check out. The free stuff that I have seen in the past is just not very good. And I didn't want to produce a video where I have critique after critique after critique and seem like a hater or something like that. Um, but I was really pleasantly surprised on what I have been seeing on App Academy Open. And we're going to take a look at that curriculum and why I think it's so good. But first, let's talk about what exactly this App Academy thing is, and then we'll go into the curriculum. App Academy is a coding boot camp in San Francisco. Their acceptance rate is 5% as of 2014. Now, this may have changed over the years from what I've been seeing in other posts to they're they're pretty picky about who they choose to come to their school, which is probably a big reason why they can brag about placing more software developers at Google than UC Berkeley. They are very choosy about who comes into their program. The App Academy open curriculum is that same curriculum they're using for their full stack in-person program. With the readings, with the videos, with the projects, it's about 1500 hours, which is a, a lot. I think if you're doing that like 40 hours a week, it's still gonna take like eight months. So if you're planning on taking this, the whole kit and caboodle course, be prepared, it's 1500 plus hours. So let's hop over here. It's very easy to sign up. I signed up in like, 30 seconds and then was given the full stack online curriculum and the full stack online curriculum consists of all of these courses. Now, when I first logged on and started exploring this, it was like sub menu after sub menu or seemingly sub menu after sub menu. I actually didn't go over this section, but I started here, the full stack online intro to programming course. And he goes through all these numbers, Boolean strings, variables. The twist with all of this is that he is teaching this in Ruby. Ruby is a great beginner's language, great syntax, fun to use, relatively, I never wanna say easy. I never wanna say that word, but relative to other language options. Um, I definitely think it's easier than JavaScript if it's your first language. Um, so I do like that they are teaching a great newbie language, but be aware web development is largely JavaScript. You're not going to be using a lot of Ruby in web development, even Ruby on Rails. There used to be a boom of Ruby on Rails jobs, but unless you're in a tech hub, not so much. So that's something to really keep in mind with this too. The way he presents this information is outstanding. This is not your standard Udemy course. I really enjoy that you see the instructors. You get a mix of lectures, uh, whiteboard stuff, as well as him and other instructors throughout this curriculum uh, behind the keyboard. It doesn't feel like you're on a desert island with one instructor for hundreds of hours. And that keeps things interesting too. You get different perspectives and different ways, different styles. So yeah, a big part of this full stack curriculum is learning Ruby. So if that turns you off, just skip it because there is some great stuff here that doesn't pertain to Ruby, like SQL, JavaScript, React. One thing I was worried about when I hit the React section was that they were gonna be, that these videos were gonna be outdated. Now, a lot of Udemy courses that I've reviewed in the past, or at least checked out in the past, they become outdated very quickly. Create React app is something I don't see on many React courses on a place like Udemy, which is not a make or break thing, but it does make such a difference uh, when students are given the current iteration, the current version of how we do things. And there are projects galore. Minesweeper, I had a list here that someone um, listed in Reddit. Ruby ORM modeled after Active Record, Ajax Twitter clone, Reddit clone, JavaScript library modeled after jQuery, Interactive Piano written in React, Airbnb clone, the list goes on. So some fun projects. And what I also noticed about this curriculum, this is where it stands out above so many others is that whether it's a lecture or a walkthrough, 
they are explaining so much of their process. This curriculum also spends a lot of time on data structures. I think this is the lecture. Is this the guy that I really enjoy? This guy, I don't know if he announces his name earlier on, but his stage presence is awesome. This data structure section, again, guys, this thing is this, this whole curriculum, where to go, where to go, where to go. Don't do this to me. This whole curriculum is absolutely free to access. And again, going back to the reason it took me so long to talk about this and explore this curriculum is because I assumed it was not going to be that good. The way this guy in particular explains data structures, um, I've actually completed, I was so engaged. I watched this lecture. It's 40 minutes. Um, but he really has a great stage presence and he really explains things instead of just writing things on the board and expecting you to know them. The instructors consistently know what they're talking about and explain it in a way that I think is better than almost any free material you can find online and better than a lot of the paid stuff. There is a big section on project planning, MVP, architecting, going through checklists. And this is stuff that you do in the real world. And it's very valuable. Object-oriented JavaScript, I thought, was explained really good. There is a lot of stuff to do on your own. If you've tried to teach yourself web development, this happens to every one of us. We get distracted. We get bored. We want more. We want to see what else is out there. Trying to slog through this is a Herculean task, okay? It's 1,500 hours of stuff. You have to have the discipline of a coding god to get through all this stuff. The second thing, and I, I'm really hesitant to call this a critique because I think Ruby is a great language for beginners, but I think a lot of people will be getting immersed in Ruby and that transition to JavaScript might be a little tough. Going through object-oriented programming with Ruby, um, that's 14 hours. Big O with Ruby, 15 hours worth of stuff. And so you start feeling that kinship with Ruby and then it's like, oh, time to learn JavaScript. The Rails section, there's probably some good stuff in there, I'm sure of it. But practically speaking in 2019, to spend weeks with Ruby on Rails, I mean, look at this, Rails and CSS, 24 hours. I don't know if that's the best investment of your time. Pick and choose what you think is going to work best for you. But all in all, I was very impressed with this curriculum, especially because it's free. That just made me think, OK, it's not that good. Um, this is really the exception here. And going to this, where is it? Acceptance rate. Their acceptance rate and the fact that they've placed a lot of people at Google, more software developers at Google than UC Berkeley. Uh, it's got to be tough. It's got to be tough and you have to have a tenacity. Google usually does not hire code newbies, i.e. people who just graduated from a code school and absolutely do not have the expectation that you're going to be hired by Google or a quote unquote fang company, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google. I always wonder why Microsoft is not included in that acronym. Uh, don't assume they want to talk to you if you complete all of this stuff because so much of it is with your network, your connections. And they do go into that in the job search course of this curriculum. I spent a lot of time there too, looking through a lot of this stuff. And it is good. They even have a whole section on whiteboarding because that's a skill in itself. Um, if you're trying to get your whiteboarding up to snuff, it's here somewhere. Or maybe they do it throughout. I can't remember. It's all a blur at this point. <laughs> so just keep that in mind that this guarantees nothing, even though it is a really rigorous curriculum. Uh, you might pair it with a course that you're taking right now. I think there really is just about something for everyone in this curriculum. I highly recommend checking it out, even if you just need a refresher on Docker or something. The way that it's explained, the consistency of the curriculum is something that's notable here. So they explain it, all the stuff that I saw anyway. Uh, was explained very well. Don't expect cute dog memes with this course. There are a few instructors who like to keep it light um, and make a few jokes here and there, but don't expect anything ridiculous. This is for people who really want to level up their skills. Again, this is App Academy Open. They are not paying me to talk so glowingly about them. I am genuinely impressed with this curriculum. Shout out to App Academy Open. S. Morales, I apologize for taking so long to do this first look video. I was not expecting this high of quality material 
to be free. If you have taken this curriculum, let me know what you think in the comments. Is this something you're going to even bother? Are you guys fatigued with coding education? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video.